everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. My name is Katie Carson. I am a professional soap maker and today, per many, many, many requests, I will be reacting to viral soap hack videos. So for those who aren't acquainted with this style of video, I'm gonna be searching through YouTube to find viral soap hack videos, so over a million views, and then I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts and professional opinion on whether or not these things are achievable, if they're safe, or if these people are just completely making it up. I'm not signed into my YouTube account right now because I don't want it to affect the search results. I just want to type in soap hacks and see what comes up. So we have five minutes crafts play. <laughs> They've got 15 million views on this thing. So let's try this one first. Aw, that's a cute little intro. I like that. Whoa, okay, so whoa, we're off with a bang. This is Melton Pour Soap Base. They didn't tell you that, but that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, all right, that would totally work. Yeah, I put a little bit of Melton Pour in a rectangle mold. Totally work. Now they're taking, oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> I personally would not recommend microwaving a regular bar of soap. You don't really know what chemicals are being put into those things, and I would say the cheaper the bar of soap is, probably the more chemicals are in there And whenever you're microwaving it. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those chemicals and fragrances and stuff are now being released into the air, and it's just not a great idea. I would say the only soap you should be putting in the microwave is the Melton Pour soap bases that specify, yes, you can put this in the microwave. Otherwise, I'd just stay away from that as a general rule. Also, I doubt it would look like that. That looks so perfect, I'm skeptical. Okay, Pringles can, we got roses. Yeah, you're gonna pour the, the Melton Pour over it. All right, let me tell you why this doesn't work. <laughs> The types of flowers they just put into the Pringles can are fresh flowers. And like one of the huge no-nos of soap making is putting flowers into soap because they turn really, really yucky colors. They go brown. They don't hold up for over 24 hours. They just look really nasty. Um, I've seen some people put silk flowers in soap and then just discard the flower after they've used the bar. I personally find that a little bit wasteful, but you could also make soap flowers, embed that into your soap, and that way you can use the entire thing. But putting fresh flowers or dried flowers into a melt and pour soap base, don't try it. Believe me, it's not gonna look good like theirs does. Okay, so now they've got some donut molds and they're putting, okay, sprinkles in it. Sprinkles are gonna bleed pretty bad. If you put straight sprinkles into soap, it, it's gonna it's gonna start smearing the colors. It's not gonna look as pretty as there. Whoa, hold on now, you're just putting straight aloe vera in there? Whoa, stems and all, huh? Okay, I uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> why? Why do you want to do this? I don't understand. There's no way that works, there's no way. Taking a full like aloe vera stem and just blending it down, no. Melt and pour soap is a completely pre-made soap base. You are not creating soap, you are melting it down. Now, I'm not knocking melt and pour soap crafting. There's so many unique creative ways to do it. It is definitely a form of, you know, soap crafting, but you are not taking your fats plus a base and putting them together for saponification to make a soap bar. So whatever you're putting into melt and pour is being suspended in the soap. It's not getting incorporated. It's not going through another chemical change. It's just being held. So putting what was just an enormous amount of aloe vera with like this much soap base is never gonna solidify. The soap base cannot possibly absorb that much aloe vera. Plus, I don't feel like that would be very nice on your skin. Like, aloe vera has spines. Who knows if that got completely blended up? That's a, just don't even do that. <laughs> if you want to add aloe vera or you want to do a melt and pour, just buy melt and pour, 
that already has aloe vera in it. There are plenty of melt and pour aloe vera soap bases online. Just buy it pre-added to your soap base. Okay, let's watch a different video from a different channel. This is Blossom. And this is the video that I have been tagged in the most often. It's like 10 amazing DIY soap crafts. It's on Facebook mainly, and now I'm seeing it's on YouTube as well. It has over 5 million views, so people really like this one too. Okay, so they're starting out with bubble wrap and soap base. Okay, we're doing like the honeycomb look on top. I, oh, whoa! Okay, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is always how it goes. They start off doing something completely normal and then just wreck it. You cannot just add whatever ingredient into soap that you want without measuring it first. And honey, honey is a humectant, so it's going to be drawing moisture to it. You're already working with glycerin soap, which has a tendency to gather little moisture beads on top. It has a lot of glycerin in it. Glycerin is also a humectant. So when it draws moisture <laughs> to it, it can look quite ugly. Um, it gets really sweaty looking and adding just honey in willy nilly, not measuring anything that's not going to end well. I mean, that soap is going to be sweaty. It's probably going to be squishy and sort of hard to cut. A very quick Google search can tell you a recommended rate for adding honey to melt and pour. So you can see I've gone over here to soapqueen.com. I just Googled like how much honey can I add to melt and pour soap? And she recommends adding half a teaspoon per pound. So that's a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit. They probably just poured half a pound to a whole pound in this video. And we can see that is way more than half a teaspoon, like way, way more. You're looking at maybe three tablespoons, maybe two tablespoons. It's way too much. Oh, again, with putting ivory soap in the microwave. Just, just don't, just don't do that. All right, so now they're doing a coffee soap. This, this may work, okay, this may work. Okay, no, no, this isn't real either. You would have a very difficult time getting a bar of soap out of a cupcake tin. It's metal, you'd have to probably gouge it off the sides Never freeze your melt and pour. It will make your soap sweat. Just leave it out on the counter. They also said just to put it in the oven until it's all melted down. I don't know why you would do that. You can just put it in the microwave like you're supposed to, pour it into a silicone cupcake liner so it can come out easy, leave it on the counter. I know it's gonna take a little while longer, but if you put it in the freezer, it's gonna get all sweaty and gross. And then you will have a perfect bar, like what they're showing here. <laughs> I mean, you can see the shape of this soap and go, yeah, that's not from the inside of a cupcake liner. It's the wrong shape. Why you lie to people like this? Now we've got some green dye. This should be soap safe dye. Okay, it should be soap safe colorants. They're adding that. A little bit of white, a little bit of red. Okay, yeah, this would definitely work. You add some poppy seeds, yeah, a little watermelon soap. That would work. That would be a really, really fun project to do, actually. Add a little fragrance oil in there, get a little watermelon smell. Okay, so we're adding, hold on, no, no. <laughs> can testify. If you add green tea to melt and pour soap, you can totally do that. It's not going to ruin your batch, but it is not going to turn that color. They definitely added green dye into there with the green tea. It's not going to look like that. <laughs> yeah, no. Look at that green. No way. Who do they think they're fooling? No way. Okay, squirt some water, squirt some stuff, mush it around, a little snowball. Yep, that would work. It would totally work. Whoa. Hold on a second. Did they just, I'm gonna have to rewind this. Why melt and pour base? Cinnamon? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Y'all listen very carefully <laughs> because I want what is best for you. Please do not put cinnamon in your soap. Cinnamon is spicy, like it is hot. You should never put cinnamon in cold processed soap. Just no soap, please don't put cinnamon in there. You never wanna use cinnamon essential oils. Um, Cinnamon fragrance oil even, most of the time they'll put on their stuff like not body safe. It will burn you. I, I, and they just dumped like a whole tablespoon into there. 
I really do not understand why you would do this. I know what they're going to do. I know they're going to make a cinnamon roll. It's going to be cute. Please use either a brown mica or maybe some apricot seed powder or uh, shoot, if you wanted to use coffee grounds, you can do that, but do not put cinnamon into your soap. Also, vanilla essential oil, no. <laughs> Vanilla fragrance oil, yes. Vanilla extract, no. <laughs> yeah, these people don't even know the right terms. It makes it all suspicious to me. If you don't even know the right words to say when you're telling people, oh, more cinnamon? No. Okay, this is cute. Like the idea is cute. You can roll up the cinnamon roll, I get it. But no, not with real cinnamon. Just use brown mica. Oh, put a little sweet almond oil with more cinnamon on top. No, please y'all, please don't do this. Please don't. It's really cute. Like it looks edible, it looks real. Don't use real cinnamon and use like a verified fragrance oil that is safe for your body. Okay, pink soap coloring. Red soap coloring, rose essential oil. See, they do know essential oil. They should just know that vanilla isn't one. This little rose thing they were, they got going on, that's that'll work. That will definitely work. It would take a really long time. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I think that would definitely work. It, it would be time intensive and you would have to get really strategic with how you do that, but it would work and it'd look really cute if you put that like in a little box. Are they gonna put it in a box? Uh, just set them on the counter with tea lights. That looks good too. Yeah, peel them off. You know, single use soaps essentially. Lots of people are really into that right now. Ah uh, yes, soap ASMR. Cut up all those soap cubes. So satisfying. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna make a confetti soap? This would work if that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, little confetti soap, okay. Mix it all up, put it in a little, oh wait, are they making like a confetti cake soap? That's pretty cute, pretty cute. Okay, dish soap in melt and pour. Yeah, it should look similar to that. I believe there's a really good recipe for soap frosting if you're interested in making melt and pour soap frosting on the Wholesale Supplies Plus website. I will leave that down below because I'm not sure that it would look exactly like this. Also, again, they're not measuring anything, so I don't know how they expect people to make this if they're just like, oh, put a little dunk of this, oh, put a little dunk of that there, ta-da! Like, no one really knows how to use this. It's it's mainly, I think, either for creative inspiration or just for entertainment. This is not really a tutorial. It's not really a hack. They're just, they're not giving you enough information for it to qualify as one of those. Sprinkles on top. I hope those are made out of soap. Those look like they're real pieces of candy. No. Ugh, <laughs> oh, I'm so disappointed. Okay, again with the honey that they're not measuring at all. Almond oil, orange essential oil. Okay, so another thing about melt and pour soap bases is you don't need to add any extra oils to it. You don't need to add any avocado oil, almond oil, things like that. It's not like cold processed soap. It's not actually absorbing those and transforming it into soap. It's just sitting in the already made soap base. So you don't need to add any of those. Just add your, your fragrance oil, your additives, your color. That's all you really need to add. I have to say though, these are some really cute ideas and I feel like a lot of people who are beginners could really benefit from these if they were true tutorials. If they were really telling you how to make it, it would be super, super helpful. So for the purpose of tutorials, I would recommend going to the Soap Queen YouTube channel because she has lots of super, super, super beginner friendly tutorials that actually give you all of the measurements that you need. I've got a couple of those, but it's not really my specialty and I don't do a lot of melt and pour. I do mainly cold process. So 25 genius soap hacks that will satisfy you. I like the description here. Do you think soap is boring? We're about to prove it otherwise. Wait, what? No, what? Nah. <laughs> more honey, more no measuring, nothing. Nah, you already showed us this. <laughs> it's the same thing. Thumbs up if you'd like to see me recreate viral soap hacks that you can actually do at home 
get good results for, complete with instructions and measurements. Well, friends, that was certainly very interesting. I honestly expected to see a lot more faux pas. They did pretty good, and I will say a lot of those ideas are pretty creative and would actually work. Your biggest takeaways should be, please measure all of the ingredients that you add into your soap melt and pour base. Use reputable fragrance oils and colorants. Once again, I'll leave you guys some people that sell them down below. Do not add cinnamon to your soap ever. If you enjoyed this video, if you would like to see me react to some more videos, feel free to send them my way on Instagram or Twitter. If you guys liked this sort of video, give it a thumbs up so that I know, hey, they're interested, they actually enjoyed it. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that's going out and trying a new soap experiment using Melt and Pour Soap. You can probably find some at your local craft store if they're open. And again, I'll leave you guys suppliers below. I know I've said that like three times, but I really will. And until next time, have an absolutely royal day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.